Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey, this week I'm gonna go ahead and answer more of your questions. Not the same ones I answered last week, but more. Here we go, this one is RVing with uh, Bandit. RVing with Bandit, not the Bandit, but Bandit. I love the beard and I love the batteries. I also have a question that has nothing to do with beard and batteries. It's on the AC side. Uh, it's AC related. When I put my thermostat on fan only mode and it kicks on the AC fan, is that just recirculating the air from the inside of the RV through the intake or would it be bringing in air from the outside? My new rig has a dual AC and there's no vent above the rear bed. Okay. Uh, I would love to bring uh, in the cool air at night, and I think it's just recirculating when I go to fan mode. Thanks. I know your expertise will help me solve my issue from reading some of the, uh, from needing some of the fresh cool night without the AC running unit. Now here's the thing. Um, air is just like anything else. I can't force air into a sealed room, so I can't be forcing in air into the, from the outside to the inside unless there's air going out. Your AC only recirculates the, in, the air inside the RV. You're looking at in your bedroom, right? You don't have the unit where you see the AC, but you do have maybe registers. What you may not have is a return vent inside the bedroom. So yes, whenever you turn it on fan mode, you may get some air in, but you don't get a lot of air out. Of a balloon. There's only so much air I can put in that balloon. At some point, there's too much resistance. I can't force anymore. This is where you get your head, you know, the head trauma from blowing up a balloon, especially when they're brand new. You're trying to do that. Oh, it hurts. It's the same thing for your air conditioner, right? We're trying to push air in there, and if it can't get out back in there, it's not recirculating. You have what's called a whisper quiet design. Chances are there's a return vent. It looks like a supply vent, okay, but it's a return vent. One way to test is see if there's any air coming. And if there's not, take a piece of paper, stick it up there. And if it holds it, then we know it's sucking air in, right? If not, then huh, I'd have to have that vent checked, right? It should be blowing air and it's not. But let me answer your question. How do you get cool air into the room? Open the window, right? Get fresh air in. I would still recirculate the air, okay? Open the window, especially if you have two. Now take a, a fan and, and blow the air out. You're gonna suck air across, right? That's how you get that in. Um, also, you have uh, your exhaust, your exhaust fans, right? You can turn one on and that's gonna pull the air out and that air has to come from somewhere. So you can open the window for that. Um, that's really the simplest way. Um, you won't have to run the AC. You don't have to use any electricity. You do want some mo movement, so a fan would be good. But honestly, that'd be the best way. Unfortunately, no, the AC, unlike your car where you can press a button and either pull in air from the outside um, uh, or recirculate it. In the RV, it's always recirculating. The only way to get air in is to force air out and then have an entry for the air, right? So again, open the window, stick a small fan and either blow the air out. I would say blow it in because you can also turn on um, your uh, vent up top, now remember heat rises, and when you suck the air out, the first air that goes out is the warm air. It may not be in the bedroom, maybe in the bathroom, so you'd have to open that door, or if you have two adjacent windows, open up one, both windows, put a fan on one side, forcing it out, hopefully you're drawing air in. Best thing, okay? So I hope that helps out. Um, that's really the best way to do that, is go old school. Open up those uh, um, windows. All right, there was another question that I had here um, about the air conditioner. Ah, here we go. This is from Larry Lofton. Larry Lofton. 1959. wonder when he was born. All right, here we go. What do you think about soft start devices? Well, obviously, you haven't looked at all my videos because I've done this about 16 times. But I'll do it again for you, sir. Right? It's probably been a good year or two. All right. Do they extend the lifetime of the, you know, the compressor? Uh, or can they harm the compressors? Which is better, permanent mounts 
or the pedestal uh, plug-in style as active controls. Oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I got some opinions there. Uh, do the pedestal style impact other appliances? You betcha. You betcha. I don't like the pedestal style, okay? Permanent is always better, okay? Voodoo science going on in the pedestal. All right, here we go. Um, what do I think about soft starts? I like them. Yes. I like them. Do they extend the life? Okay, now this is where we get into theory. I'm going to say yes, but let's go into the theory. All right. Got some pushback on some, you know, people, HVAC guys out there that have, they know info. They do. They know it, but they haven't been taught how this stuff works, okay? Objects at rest tend to stay at rest, okay? Your compressor, not being a variable drive um, uh, at all, goes from 0 to 100 like that, okay? It needs what's called a capacitor to build up both the voltage and the amperage for a split second. We call it an inrush, okay? It creates a magnetic field around the compressor so the compressor can freely get to its nominal speed as quickly as possible, okay? That's cause and effect. However, true voltage going to it's about 400 volts, depending on the size of the capacitor, but in the RV space, 370 to 440. But it also sends a high amp throughput, anywhere between 60 amps to 80 amps, depending on the size of the air conditioner, for a brief second. Again, we call it inrush. Got to have certain multimeters can catch it, okay? That's what a standard capacitor does, okay? The soft start is going to take that hit from that capacitor, and then it's going to divvy it up. It's going to act like a modified variable frequency drive. It's not going to dish it out to that compressor all at once. It's going to send it to it in doses, right? It follows the sine wave and sends it to it in doses. That's kind of the, the layman's terms of how this works. Here's the effect, okay? We're never sending more than 17, 18, 19 amps total, okay? If we increase amperage to a compressor, and the compressor has coils inside, and the, the size of those coils are a certain size, right? They can handle a certain amount of amperage. For a brief second, it gets overloaded when we use a capacitor. Over time, over time, that's going to wear that compressor down. I get it. You need a so you need a um, some type of capacitor to get that air conditioner moving. That's where I had my HVAC guys go. No, you need one to get it started. Totally get it. One thing we can do though is is change that signal from a huge hit because that's what a capacitor does. Bamo hits it all at once. Sets it up in a little doses, right? So think of it that way. Do I just eat the steak all at once, which is a good way of doing it? Or do I chop it up and take bite size? But in the air conditioner, that's what the soft start does. They typically extend the life, okay, if you match it correctly. And do you like, you asked also, do I like the permanent side or the temporary side of the pedestal? I do not like the pedestal. I don't, okay? I'm still testing it, but I'll tell you where my, where my heart is with that, okay? It creates a brownout situation for other capacitor style um, devices like a refrigerator, right? I'm sending a variable frequency, a modified variable uh, frequency over to a refrigerator. I can go into brownout mode. In other words, I'm starving that capac uh, that compressor over there because there's no capacitor on there, okay? On most uh, RV style, compressor style refrigerators, okay? If you're sending a modified signal that doesn't need to be there, okay? Now, the reason that they did that was that of laziness, right? You, the RV owner, too lazy to get up on the roof and put one in or hire a tech, right? I totally get that, but it creates problems. I don't like them. I know I may get pushback on that. Fine, I got the science with me. It's going to be coming out. I don't like them. Um, I'll tell you one of the best brands out there, something that's UL certified, right? I do like the Micro Air version. Okay, I know that there's a ton out there. Some of them are great. Some of them may not be so much because I know just like when we're flooding the market, are they really doing it? They stand behind theirs. Okay, they'll give you a two-year warranty, not only on the soft start, but on your air conditioner if your air conditioner is six years or younger. Okay, now, is there a consideration? If you have a new RV with a new air conditioner, they will avoid the warranty if you put a different brand soft start on there. Do you see the crap that they're doing now? So if you have a Dometic, guess what they'll sell you? A Dometic soft start, right? Won't vo It will not void the warranty if you have a Dometic soft start, but you put a different brand on there, voids the warranty. Okay, same thing. Coleman does that as well, okay? Microair, not only do they uh, warranty the soft start, they'll warranty the air conditioner, even if the other company voids their warranty. They'll say, fine, we'll do it for another two years. 
right? Because that's probably typically what your warranty is on your brand new air conditioner. All right. So that's the brand. Are there other brands out there that are good? Yes. But do any of them stand behind it like that? That type of warranty? Not so much. All right. So there's my two questions. Guess what? There's your tech tips. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, Roll the bloopers. Not that one. But, boom. Todd, love the tips. Nah. Tips. I like that. I'm falling forward. Whoa, I'm top heavy. I love the bear and I love the batteries. Where the hell do you see a bear? Okay. I think he said I, I love the beard. However, people may mistake the beard for a bear. I get it. I'm trying to give some useful information to Larry Lofton, 1959. Right? And you're over there yelling. I mean, not yelling. Now you got me all messed up. I'm verklempt.